Ooh, forgot to refresh my page. Wait, close your eyes. Pretend you didn't see it. Okay, all right, we're ready. Hey, y'all, my name's Jay Wilson. I am a Domo Dojo troll. I don't know, how do I describe myself? I hang out on the Domo Dojo, answering, making video responses to topics and questions that I see come up in the dojo. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Domo Dojo, check it out, dojo.domo.com. Um, it's a great place for connecting people and you know, harvesting the knowledge that everyone in the larger Domo technical community has to answer your questions. And who knows, you might get a video response from me. He said like that's a like great reward or something. I don't know, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's keep going. Um, in the dojo, somebody came up with this question. They said, Jay, I, I, I need to build a invoice aging report, you know, where you can age your invoices 30, 60, 90 days. And I was like, yeah, no sweat. Do, you know, the date diff based off of today's date and piece of cake. And they were like, then they said, well, no, we have this requirement where I need to be able to do point in time reporting. So I need to be able to change a date parameter that allows me to look backward and say, what did my aging look like last week? Or what did my aging look like at the start of the current fiscal month or whatever the, you know, whatever the date thing is? I can't base it off of today's date because that's, I, I have no impact on that. And I don't want to have to run an ETL in order to update my values. I said, no problem. Let me make you a quick video. So uh, here's some shopping cart data. This is just a data set that I grabbed off of Kaggle. Um, I've got you know shopping order IDs. And these are the dates that the actual activity or the invoice, let's say, took place. These are the invoice due dates. Um, I've added a fixed column, join column equals 1, to every single row in the data set. Now you can do this in Magic ETL, you can um, program this into your workbench ingestion process. There's a lot of ways you can get this static constant added to the data set. Um, I cheated and typed it in because it's a web form, but uh, let's roll with this. Also, if you've been watching my uh, YouTube channel, then you've probably seen me use join column left, right, and center all over the place. It's a pretty good trick. So uh, let's watch it. Let's see how it works over here. I have another web form called date parameter, um, which again has that join column equals one, and I've got my date parameter, April 15, 2020. Now, just to prove to you guys that this works, I'm going to change the date to a different date. Do, do, do. 3.17. All right, I update my web form, and by the time I get back here uh, and, ref and can refresh the page, my data has been updated to 3.17. And it's showing aging as of March 17. And I promise you, I did not use any sort of ETL. So what is the solution? The solution, dear friends, is to use a fusion. If you're not using fusions, or if you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I used a fusion once. It was terrible. I'm never using them again. Call me up. Let's have a conversation, because fusions are truly one of the best ways to scale the work that you're doing on large data sets quickly without having to rely on ETL. Um, fusions will give you an instantaneous result, or at least fusions have to give you a result in within a minute or they fail. If your fusions are failing, again, talk to me. I can help you with that. Um, what I've done here, super basic, just done a join column equals join column. And when I preview my data set, what happens is the value for the date parameter gets spread onto every single row of the transaction data set. So here's 2317 compared to my order date, take the date diff of that, and obviously that's the aging. Now, why does that work? Well, it works because both of my data sets, date parameter and the shopping cart, have a fixed value of one for the join column. So again, effectively, I've done a cross apply or a Cartesian product or a cross-join, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> yeah, so, so that's my fusion. And again, I go into my cards, the value changes. If I update the value in the, oh god, I'm clicking all over the place. No, stop it. If I go back to my date parameter, as soon as I edit my web form, By the time I can get back to my card and refresh the page, 
this, the data will already be up to date. Super slick. Now there's one small nuance to just keep you guys, you know, thinking and on your toes, right? I'm looking at the activity as of 320. So in my aging, I need to make sure that I'm excluding all the activity that came between March 20th and today's date. So I need to exclude the future posted activity, as it were. And so I've added a filter um, that says date parameter is posted, yes or no. And basically what we have here is just if the order date, sorry, if the parameter date is greater than the order date, then the activity posted as of 320. But if the order date is greater than 320, it hasn't posted yet. So nice, easy um, case statement there. And then, of course, for the aging statement, sorry, wrong one. For the aging, get it together, Mr. Wilson. For the aging statement, uh, it's just a date diff. And all I've done is I've swapped in my date parameter column where previously everyone would have used the now or the, the current date. Um, just a small tip, uh, 30, 60, 90, and current. Um, I've added 4321 to add so that I can have a natural sort order to it. Um, you could just you could have two columns that one with 4321, one without if you want to have a display version and a sort column. Those are some things you can do. Also, um, what I really appreciate about using magic ETL infusions to make these um, aging buckets happen is that you know finance, they do aging different to the AR team. The, the accounts, receivables, accounts receivables team, they do 30, 60, 90 aging. But the finance team, they might do aging on a um, 60, 90, 270 breakdown or sets of buckets. So by keeping the, the metric itself as a beast mode, I can expose to my end users, hey, this is how I did the calculation. If you don't like my calculation, change the buckets or create a new one. Um, but it, it keeps it out of ETL and keeps it in the hands of the users who own that data. Just to prove, oh, sorry, I wanted to prove to you that my future posting, not posting works. Okay, I have 39 orders that are future dated or that took, that came in after 320. Again, just a quick edit on my web form. Let's set it back to 415, good old today. Again, by the time I can get back here and refresh, I have no future dated activity because all of the data came in as of 4.15 or earlier. So that's the solution. Just some easy tricks using um, fusions and join columns to create a AR, AR aging report with parameterized queries. My name's Jay Wilson. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. Find me in the Domo Dojo. Have a great day.